The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Sebastian slithered through the halls of the black side. He was angry. Mostly at himself, which was a state he hated even more. After all, he was a pretty great guy. Despite smelling like a dead fish. The reason was that things had started appearing in the black side, things that were not supposed to be here anymore, such as suspiciously fresh apples, red umbrellas, and dead stuffed turtle specimens. The reason these random items felt so out of place were not only their locations, but also the simple fact that somewhere located on them was always a singular functioning eye which blankly stared forward, glistening in the pale light of the black side's neon tubes. Of course, the saboteur knew what created these mimics. One of the few monsters he specifically kept in containment, knowing fully well letting that one loose would do more harm than good, especially in the long run. When and how this thing had gotten out wasn't unknown to him. After all, it wasn't all that intelligent, but it was strong and quite terrifying. He stopped in front of what appeared to be a keypad, which would open a massive door he was standing in front of. However, on the other side of it was another keypad. He needed to swipe his security card to pass, but God knows what would happen if he swiped the wrong one. Sebastian leaned forward, inspecting the keypad before him. Unlike the other, it wasn't glowing, which was the first hint that this might be the mimic of the two. He inspected it closely, and then he noticed it. The cables, instead of vanishing in the ground, they were little suckers attached to the floor. Sebastian raised one arm and slammed it harshly onto the keypad. A disgusting, slimy noise erupted from it, as what appeared to be great plastic with rubber keys was in fact the mimic's chitin shell, as it fudded on the ground. The back of it, which had attached itself to the wall, was red, fleshy, with multiple pairs of sucking appendages to stay attached. After a second hit, the creature was reduced to a red mush its rudimentary organs spilling from its grey shell. He almost vomited. What a disgusting creature. Sebastian then swiped his card for the real keypad. Entering a large room. A lot of tables, a lot of chairs. It was a cafeteria. Exactly where he wanted to be. Sure, there were a lot of items here that could be suspicious, but also this meant it would remain here for some. His heart skipped a beat. Sebastian quickly slithered behind a pillar. He had seen something. As quiet as a church mouse, he could hear footsteps, the right step more heavy than the left. The pitter patter of naked feet. Quietly, he leaned around the pillar, seeing you. Sebastian closed his eyes, thinking, What was written in your document again? Yeah, he could see it in front of his inner eye. Z-494-1, codename The Starving Woman, a creature capable of untold violence discovered in the bottom of the sea in the Bay Area of New York wandering the murky depths. The creature takes on the appearance of a seemingly frail young female adult with hip-long gray hair dressed in a tattered gray dress, dating back to the mid to late fifties with severe water damage. 
The creature shares its human features as well as faint DNA traces with those of a woman who went missing at around the same time, going by the name of Penelope Cruz. All informations of the disappearance of Miss Cruz have been collected by Urban Shade. Notable are the creature's missing eyes, which appear to be surgically removed and sewn shut, as well as the removal of all teeth and vocal cords. But, most importantly, is the creature's massive right arm, taking on the shape of a grey, semi-decayed eel of the Myxine glutinosa family, or more commonly called the Pacific Ocean Hackfish. The appendage can stretch up to 32 feet, 10 meters. Its mouth is equipped with multiple rows of sharp teeth, powerful enough to shred through urban shade MTF safety equipment, as well as constantly being coated in a layer of slime used to capture any aquatic prey, as well as slow down or disable any prey on land. Through this appendage, Z-494-1 is capable of consuming any form of biological matter, though it prefers meat. If Z-494-1 is not fed every approximate 12 hours, the being's eel appendage will begin to produce and regurgitate small parasitic creatures Refer to as instances of Z-494-2. These can take on the appearance of food items, most common the shape of apples, and even more complex inorganic items such as small chairs, cups, tables and umbrellas. Instances of Z-4942 contain rudimentary organs, most commonly eyes, through which Z-494-1 is able to see. An instance of Z-494-2 can survive for up to 72 hours, after which they turn into a foul-smelling biomatter, comparable to excrement. Notably, said biomatter makes for great fertilizer, as well as biofuel. Z-494-1's hunting behavior consists of producing vast quantities of Z-494-2 to observe its surroundings. If prey spotted, Z-494-1 will begin an immediate pursuit, utilizing the ability to stretch its massive appendage to capture and devour anything it comes across. In cases of Z-494-1's hunger being satisfied, the creature becomes docile and begins wandering around the area it found itself in after catching its last meal. It will continue this behavior until hungry again. Of course, there was more written in your document, such as your containment procedures, as well as how and what to feed you, but right now that didn't matter that much. Sebastian opened his eyes, sighing. A slimy noise came from you. It was her eel arm. It dropped forward to its maximum length. While blind, the thing was very agile and could turn and stretch however you saw fit. Its massive teeth clicked as the appendage filled the air around it, almost touching Sebastian as he didn't even dare to breathe. The arm quickly shot back, and Sebastian exhaled. You were one of the creatures he specifically didn't want free, as even he was going to be targeted by you if you became hungry. And judging by the apples of ice he had found, your food sources seemed to have been depleted. Though, perhaps the fact that you weren't chasing him yet after destroying the keypad mimic meant that you had just eaten something, even though it wasn't quite filling. Either way, Sebastian needed you contained. Once again, he dared peeking from his hiding spot. He saw you crouching down. Your left hand was brushing over the ground as if you were trying to dig or perhaps search for something. 
Sebastian's eyes narrowed. Your brain was located in the human part of your body. Knocking you out seemed like the easiest way to proceed. And then a horrific gurgling noise began to echo from your body. Something was coming out of your eel throat. And with a disgusting vomiting sound, something was spit out from you, glistening with salvia and slime. It was an apple, regurgitated onto the table. Neatly so. It looked edible, aside from one very obvious anomaly. An eye. It quickly scanned its surroundings. And then you did something that should have been written in your goddamn document. Your left hand grabbed the apple from the table and you held it up. Sebastian's heart stopped for a moment as you held it out like a lantern. You didn't realize you were capable of using these things like tools. You were walking forward in his direction. Narrowing his eyes, he waited for you. To hold the apple away from him while scanning your surroundings. And that's when he struck. Quickly, he swiped his tail from his hiding spot, slapping the apple out of your hand with a quiet thought that rolled under one of the tables, probably also dying in the process. But your reaction was immediate. The eel shot forward, teeth penetrating the scales of Sebastian's tail, burrowing into a soft fish flesh beneath. He grunted in pain, while you realized that your prey was bigger than expected. Due to the elasticity of your eel arm, you could swallow up things that were as tall as humans. What even the scientists could didn't know was that the inside of your eel arm was coated in thousands of tiny grinding teeth that turned any prey into minced meat simply by forcing it down the tube. Mimics due to their slime coating were unharmed by them. Using all his strength, Sebastian threw his tail into the other direction, forcing your arm to stretch to maximum length until finally you stumbled forward. Quickly he slapped his hand onto your neck and then smashed you onto the floor head first. He seemed pleased as he felt the hackfish arm loosen its grip. Knocked out, you lied there. Sebastian needed to recontain you. Your containment was a base humanoid isolation chamber. Soft walls and floor, a reinforced observation window, as well as a reinforced sliding steel door. Both materials were proven to be too strong for you to break. You're fed via a feeding tube hanging above the ceiling of your chamber. A knockout gas was supplied via the ceiling to clean up any mimics you regurgitated. Sebastian quickly and carefully dragged your heavy body behind himself. He knew where your chamber was. After all, he was the one who scribbled to not open on the door itself. Hmm. Perhaps by accident one of the other monsters released you. Either way... You needed to be back there. He grunted as he heaved you back into the soft walls of your chamber. Ugh. He grunted in disgust. The place was covered in your slime. Residual biomass of dead mimics and still living mimics who all stared at him unblinkingly. Stop looking at me! He shouted angrily. I'm just returning your queen! He turned to leave, but the slime made it difficult for a snake-like body to move quickly. He reached the door, using his arms as support, but just as he dragged his sorry body out of the slimy chamber, he felt a terrible sharp pain. Sudden, quick, powerful. You had awoken. He slammed on the ground as a force greater than his own pulled at his tail, dragging him through the slime, coating his body in it. And then 
he was faced with you. Your eel arm had outstretched to maximum height as you dangled Sebastian in front of you. Of course you couldn't see him, but the mimics in the chamber did that for you. He was a strange thing indeed. Curious. Too big yet afraid of you. Your head came closer. While he knew there were no eyes beneath your sewn eyelids, he felt as if at any moment you'd open them, especially with how close you were now to his face. The teeth of the eel were grinding a little. You were tasting his blood. It was delicious. And it was painful, but not enough to make him react audibly. He would remain defiant. But that's when he remembered something. There were two addendums in your document. Addendum 1. Observations of Z-494-1 have shown that the creature maintains a human menstrual cycle and becomes especially aggressive during its ovulation phase. It is recommended that no female personnel enters the area around Z-494-1's containment during those periods. Addendum 2 after an incident on 04-09-2001, no male personnel is allowed to enter the containment chamber during Z-494-1's ovulation phase, even after the knockout gas has been thoroughly applied. Oh god. Mumbled Sebastian. It seems as if he was about to experience Addendum 2 firsthand. You opened your toothless mouth, slapping it onto his forehead. You were slurping and licking over his scaly skin, tasting it. It was a weird, gross feeling. But he soon understood that, especially as you licked over his right eye that you just barely managed to close in time, that you were merely exploring his body in the easiest manner you had available. Hey, hey, hey. He wiggled and you retreated your head. Can't you just, like, uh, kill me or something? That would be much easier. You headbutted him. It wasn't painful, but a clear indicator of your meaning. You were basically saying, shut up, this will soon be over, try to enjoy it. He sighed and relaxed his muscles. Okay, fine. I fucked worse. In college. Ugh. The teeth gripping his tail let go, causing him to crash onto the floor of your chamber. He was now completely covered in slime. Maybe he would take a walk outside the black side after this just to get this gunk off of him. Still, he felt trapped, though, almost incapable of movement. He looked to the side, staying right at a mimic cup. Its working eye was located on the Urban Shade logo. Strange. Somehow it felt as if it was looking pleased, almost mockingly at him. Mew, meanwhile, didn't seem to be slowed down by the gunk. While clinging to your body, it was like oil to you. If anything, it was slippery. You swung yourself on top of Sebastian. He inhaled through his mouth as your appendage began to tightly press against him, sliding along the entire length of his body. It was warm, soft, feeling a bit like a very oversized slug snaking over him. The eel's dangerous face hovered over his. It tilted from left and right. And suddenly, he shook and gasped. <gasps> uh, what are you touching there? He had been so focused on the monstrous tentacle that he forgot what it was attached to. 
While your eagle was getting used to the feeling of his body, you had used your human half and arm to gently touch and caress his scaly hide until you found a little hole or more, a sheath. Your small fingers were gliding along hot, soft, slippery flesh, slake, red from the pumping blood, and Sebastian could feel you touching his most private of parts. He wiggled, grunted, and moaned. A croaking noise came from your human body, a pleased sound. As he felt your hand grip him tightly, Fuck, that's sensitive! Not so hard! He shouted. But that was it. That was the last breath he took, as the massive eel had chomped down on his head, mostly to shut him up. The immediate teeth behind your lips were pulled back. Just barely he could feel their tips scrape over the sides of his head. He was staring at a wet, hot, wall of flesh pressing against him. From the abyss of your throat shot a long red tongue that licked over his lips, gently trying to find purchase it seemed. Holy shit, he thought. There's probably no one on earth who experienced this. <laughs> this was feeling kind of good. Slowly he opened his mouth. The walls of the eel arm could feel the heat coming from his lips, and so your tongue finally found his mouth. Brushing and licking, it felt like he had a super thick and sleek finger in his mouth. It was so lewd and yet so gross, he wasn't sure what to think. But, man... Whatever you were doing on the outside to the rest of his body felt even better. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, Husky HD17. Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.